My name is Kevin Tokoff, and in this video we're going to discuss the basics and theory behind the hemolysis test and blood agar. Okay, so some organisms, such as those belonging to the genus Streptococcus, are what we call fastidious organisms. And that's because they have special nutrition requirements, and not every type of agar is going to be able to facilitate their growth. And so organisms such as Streptococcus might need to be grown on enriched all-purpose media. Um, one example of an all-purpose agar base that we can use is tryptocase soy. Um, we can also enrich that agar with uh, red blood cells. And this is usually done by using some percentage of red blood cells from some organism. For example, we're going to make something called blood agar, or we're at least going to use it, and our blood agar is going to contain 5% sheet blood. And that's going to specifically contain the red blood cells. Now, hemolysis. Hemolysis is the process of destroying red blood cells by some mechanism. Okay, if you ever see the term erythrocyte, that also means red blood cell. Okay, so the hemolysis test tests a bacteria's ability to destroy red blood cells. And some bacteria, uh, which would be positive for hemolysis, um, are going to make enzymes called hemolysins. And these are enzymes that destroy red blood cells. Um, if you've ever heard of the term hemolytic anemia, that's an anemia where we have destruction of red blood cells. Hemolytic hemolysis, okay? Destruction of red blood cells. Now, different species contain different classes of hemolysin. Um, some contain a beta hemolysin, others contain an alpha hemolysin. This gamma is a little bit misleading. The gamma basically means they don't express hemolysin at all, okay? In which case there's going to be no hemolysis. Um, for bacteria that express beta and alpha hemolysins, um, they're going to destroy red blood cells, but the patterns that you're going to see on the blood agar are going to look a little bit different. Okay, And so we're going to look at those patterns on the next slide and sort of discuss what they mean. Okay, So these are the results of hemolysis tests. Okay, So I've got here, presence of some type of hemolysin produces, and we're going to look at what the pattern is. Okay, so if we have what's called beta hemolysis, so let's look over here first where I have this beta. Now, the actual, where my mouse is, the kind of um, tan region right here that actually is the beta right here, that's actually the bacterial smear. That's where they smear the bacteria, okay? So when you have beta hemolysis, you have complete hemolysis of the red blood cells around the smear, um, and you have transparency. So what happens is, is because blood agar contains red blood cells, it's very turbid. So to see the patterns, a lot of times you have to hold it up to a light. So you can either hold up if there's a light on your, on your lab bench or on a, to a ceiling light. And this sort of yellow looking region that's surrounding the beta, and also it's here in the center, um, of the beta, that's the zone of transparency, okay? And you'd be able to see that. It's much easier to see um, when you're holding it up to a light in the lab. You'll kind of get the hang of that. Here's another look at beta hemolysis. Um, you can definitely see um, it's definitely the brightest when you hold it up to a light, um, and that's how you recognize beta hemolysis, okay? If we have alpha hemolysis, um, there will be a zone of change around the bacteria, okay, around the colonies, but um, we don't have transparency, okay? So if you look at this, this is alpha hemolysis, so you can see the dark regions right here, that's kind of where the bacteria were smeared, and we see a little bit of change around that, but it's definitely not transparent. And again, it's much easier to see whenever we hold it up to a light in the actual lab, okay? If we have gamma hemolysis, so this is kind of a misleading term. Gamma hemolysis basically means there's no hemolysis. There's no destruction of red blood cells. And so this is sort of what we're seeing for gamma hemolysis. All we see is the streak of bacteria, the colonies, that's all we see, and there's no destruction of red blood cells here. Okay, and we can either record this as gamma hemolysis. I think in your lab manual here, it actually wants you to record it as non-hemolysis. Just understand this is also in some schools of thought called gamma hemolysis. Okay, so hopefully this makes sense. Um, make sure to watch the demonstration video on the hemolysis test.